All right. So it's uh, 10 o'clock and looks like we'll go ahead and get started with the presentation. I welcome everybody who's joining in today. Appreciate your time. For those of you who may not know me, I'm Alan Kirk. I'm the CIO for Texas A&M AgriLife. Uh, <clears throat> I've held that position for the last 12 years. Um, and so I head up all the centralized IT uh, for AgriLife Research Extension and the college across the state of Texas. So the topic today uh, is uh, focused primarily on uh, an introduction, if you will, to our AgriLife IT environment, primarily to the college employees who we are currently in the migra uh, pro process of migrating into. So if you've joined and you are already a employee that is serviced by AgriLife IT, this still may be pretty beneficial for you to listen to. You may get some information you haven't heard before. Uh, this again is the first in a series of orientation and training events that we're going to have throughout the, through the summer. And at the end of the presentation, I'll, I'll highlight what the next training events are. Um, for today, um, uh, we'll be going through uh, a quick orientation about our IT environment and how we got to where we are today in terms of what we're doing with the college this summer. We'll also walk through our, our new website, show you how to request support. And then at the end of the meeting we're, or this presentation, we will uh, do Q&A. So <clears throat> if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat channel. Uh, Bailey Teeter, our, our uh, coordinator for communications and training is, is helping me out with the presentation today. And if she can answer any of your questions along the way in the chat, she'll do so. Uh, otherwise, I'll, I'll address them uh, at the end and we'll, we'll do it that way. So last year, um, as many of you know, the professional services groups, which include IT, HR, marketing and administrative services were asked to come up with new strategies by Dr. Stover and Dr. Balavina and Dr. Hyde to create efficiencies and enhance the operations, if you will, across the organization. A lot of that was driven because of budget cuts and things that were coming from the state, but also with the change in times that, that COVID pandemic had brought to us. So I wanted to quickly get everybody in the same frame, if you will, on what that strategy is and what the goals were that were going to come out of those. So uh, the first and foremost, which most of you are probably very aware of, we unified all the IT staff under a centralized management model. All the IT staff in the college departments and several that worked in regional centers across the state reported originally to their department heads or, or someone close to the department head. Um, this was a major strategy because we wanted to bring every IT person into a professionally managed IT environment uh, so that, you know, someone who has an extensive enterprise background in IT can, you know, harness the skill sets of all the IT staff across the state uh, and then, you know, enhance their careers, which ultimately provides better service to you, our customers. The other, the other major component of that is we wanted to redistribute the workload of the IT staff across the state. We had some IT staff that were lightly loaded and we had some IT staff uh, that were heavily loaded. Also, we had staff that had very extreme capabilities and talents, but those talents and abilities were only being used inside the department they worked for. Um, and so we were able to take people with very enhanced IT capabilities and now apply them across the state. Uh, and that's been working out very well for us. The other major component of the strategy was to consolidate extension research in the college into a unified IT environment. Uh, we saw when COVID stroke uh, hit that uh, there was a huge 
disparity between the capabilities within the agencies as opposed to the college. And um, we wanted to bridge that gap. There's also a history at Texas A&M IT um, where they typically are very, very behind the times. Uh, most people here at the university don't realize that because that's all you see. Uh, but if you were able to see across the A&M system, you would very quickly realize that Texas A&M IT um, has traditionally been very, very, very behind on technology and capabilities. And um, there's uh, many changes afoot as we speak with that situation. And I think the new university president will be uh, making some good changes in that direction. Um, the other component of our strategy was to implement a research computing group, which we call AgriLife Research Cloud. We recognized there was a lot of needs and issues uh, in the research and computing area, um, issues surrounding security, um, issues surrounding compliance, uh, as well as issues um, with, with just not capabilities that the researchers needed to, to get their research completed. And that program launched in March of this year and it's been quite successful. Uh, I believe we're routing uh, a large amount of, of research dollars through the program, facilitating the research for researchers as we speak. And that continues to be a, a very uh, favorable situation even as we speak going forward. We're, we're meeting weekly with, with new clients or new researchers to uh, determine how the program can help them with their research. Um, the other part of the strategy was to implement standards of quality of, ser of service and support. This is really coming from Dr. Stover. Uh, he is very, very good on wanting to have the professional services groups focus on quality uh, management, if you will. And IT had been doing that for quite a while. Um, we track a variety of metrics and we use that to drive how we improve what we do. And it's very nice to see we have leadership now that uh, is interested in pursuing that and, and taking it as far as possible in terms of uh, quality and, and whatnot. Um, the goals that were to come out of these this strategy are, are many. First and foremost, we identified up to $3.45 million in annual savings that can come through the strategy. Uh, some of that is based on converting to Microsoft phone service, which is about 1.2 million of that 3.45. The other is <clears throat> with the college, there were many uh, things that were being done in different ways with different tools and different processes. So the, through the process of centralizing staff and unifying on a, a standard uh, environment, we're gonna homogenize that, if you will, and remove some of the du duplicative costs that, that are existing out within the college. There was also a lot of dependency on TAMU IT services, which were exorbitantly cost costly. Um, in fact, eight to 10 times beyond market value. Uh, so we'll be removed, we'll be moving off of those services and that that will save a considerable amount of money. Uh, the other was to provide as from the quality and customer service focus, you know, excellent customer support and robust service. <clears throat> those in the college right now, we're not there yet, and I'll explain why that is here in a moment. Um, but also to increase our standards of security and compliance, and then um, again provide that professional IT resource solution to our for our research initiatives. So, I thought I'd start with defining what a unified IT environment is because that may sound a little vague to some, but we came up with this description here. And in essence, it's an environment where all AgriLife employees will have a common set of services and solutions to be able to collaborate and be efficient and effective in a highly secure manner, both internally and externally with partners and customers. And 
to steal off of Dr. Stover's strategy for AgriLife, uh, which was one state, one AgriLife, we've added one IT to that just to continue with his his uh, mark his, his strategy there for the overall organization. So that's what we mean when we talk about a unified IT environment. We'll get into the details of that in a moment. So what are the benefits again? A, we, we reduce those operating and support costs uh, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the second and most, uh, one of the largest ones is enhanced collaboration. Um, one of our training series will focus on some of the unique uh, collaboration technologies that we have in our environment uh, that we've used for the last five or six years. Um, and so we can show you how uh, those can enhance how you do your job on a daily basis. Efficient communications. Um, you'll hear me talk early, later about a directory, a single directory, where all your applications are tied to the directory and you can simply just start typing the first part of someone's name within a few characters usually be sharing files, doing a quick video or chat session with them or other collaboration type uh, efforts. Uh, email will become a much more simplified and less complicated and less error prone situation with TAMU involved. Again, I don't want it to sound like I'm throwing TAMU under the bus, but they, are, they do things like nobody else in the world does, and that's a literal fact. Uh, they have one of the most convoluted, complicated email systems, and it has created enormous negative impact trying to communicate uh, from and out of their system. And kind of getting away from that will reduce a lot of the issues that we have. Also with their effort to move to the cloud, they will remedy a lot of the issues that they have today. So there's two big efforts there that will help to clean that up. Optimize security and compliance with everybody in one unified IT environment. IT is able to focus more clearly and concisely on where the data is stored, how it's classified, how it's moving around, um, who has access to it. Uh, we have a security team that does daily oversight on hundreds of logistical operational details. Uh, we're constantly monitoring uh, confidential data and where it's moving and who has access to it. And we have a myriad of, of, of real-time controls that help to manage that data and help protect uh, that data, be it research or confidential information. Um, and I'll, I'll speak a little bit more in the, on that later as well. The other is everything just becomes much more efficient and agile in terms of service and support. Um, we have what's called a service catalog. It lists exactly the services that we provide. And if it's not on there, it's not a service we provide. And so there's a process of bringing in a new service, be that uh, uh, an application or a piece of software, because we have a very formal process of bringing something new into the environment because we wanna make sure we have the staff that are properly trained and geared towards supporting that new element that's being brought in. We, we just really try to avoid bringing things in ad hoc because what that ends up turning into is a bit of a train wreck, especially in the beginning, because our staff may not be trained or familiar with that technology and we wanna be able to support you at the highest level. So the next slide I wanted to talk about, what are the components of the AgriLife IT environment? Um, and I kind of singled out uh, five major components here. One of the biggest ones is self-service IT. We have a variety of components here that kind of fall into that, that uh, category. Uh, one of which is we have a very uh, efficient process of onboarding and offboarding employees in the, uh, in the IT environment. I'll talk more about that later. 
Uh, we also have the ability for you to install a variety of different software yourself, even if you don't have admin access to your computer. We have a piece of software that basically puts a software portal on your computer and you're able to go in there just like the app store on your mobile device and select certain business software if you need it and have it automatically installed on your computer. But what's even better is you can do that from anywhere in the world, your home and England and Canada, wherever you can get the connectivity, you can install the software through this, this portal that we provide you. Uh, we also, uh, allow you to modify and add your own IT services. For example, if you want to add a shared email box that you and, and a group of colleagues need to set up, you don't even have to actually talk to an IT person to do that. You'll go through our self-service portal and be able to ask for the mailbox, name it, and the system will automatically create that and email everybody instructions on how to use it and whatnot. So there's a whole lot of stuff there where we've given our customers the ability to do a lot of things themselves without actually having to contact or wait for someone on our support desk to do it for you. That makes you more efficient. It makes us more efficient. And we're continuing to grow those services that we provide in a self-service fashion on, on, a, on a monthly basis. The other is in the area of technology procurement. We have our own, I like to say we have our own in-house Best Buy. Uh, we call it Tech Buy, uh, and we will be doing a orientation event on it in July. Uh, but basically it's an online store in AgriLife and the agencies, uh, agency employees we've been supporting for years know all about the site. Uh, in fact, all their computer purchases today go through TechBuy. And through that site, you can buy computers, peripherals, cables, monitors, all the types of things you use typically <clears throat> in your office and in some, in some areas with your research initiatives if you do research. Uh, some of the benefits of the program are we have a huge stock room of the equipment here in our facility. So we're not anything you see in the store, we actually have it in inventory. So during COVID, we were one of the few places in the entire a &M system that were quickly able to get webcams to people or computers or things that, that weren't being delivered because of COVID. Also, any of the any of the computers on Tech Buy are on average $150 to $350 less than anywhere else on the internet that you can buy it. Why is that? Because when we buy computers, we buy them in lots of 100 or 50, not one, two, or three. So we're able to get very deep discounts and provide and pass that cost savings on to you. The other benefit is we prepare the computers uh, so that they're ready to go out of the box when you get them. You can literally take a computer from Tech Buy if you're in our unified IT environment anywhere in the state and plug it in and log in and begin to work. Uh, there's just a few things we typically have to do for you when you get a new computer. We'll help you set up your printer and your scanner drivers and maybe something to do with your monitor. But that's typically all we have to help users with when they buy computers through us. Again, that makes it more efficient, cost-effective for you. Uh, you're waiting less. You're getting a computer on average within two to three days. Your business people that used to do the ordering for you are not spending a lot of time doing paperwork and you're not waiting two to three weeks for your computer to be delivered. And the other thing is with consultative buying. Um, if you're looking to buy a computer for research initiatives or for your office or, or, or a mobile device, uh, we you can actually contact our tech, tech buy store team and they will help you determine the best solution for you. This is efficient for you and effective, but it's also for us because you're not trying to go to our support team 
who is really busy supporting people during the business hours, if you will, we have a team dedicated to help you with your technology buying. So you don't have to go to the support desk for that. So it's more efficient, it's a higher level of service, and, and you're getting a good deal on, on the cost when you go through there. So again, we'll, we'll have a training event on that later in the summer. Um, the integrated research cloud solutions, um, we have all, the majority of our services are cloud-based. Um, and so we have engineers in our team and with our AgriLife Research Cloud folks who are in, who have for five to six years now been heavily involved in cloud technologies. Um, this is where we're ahead of most IT uh, providers in the A&M system because we've been focusing on this at a much earlier time. So if you're doing research or you're trying to do a new business function and you need a specialist to talk to about how can I do this in the cloud? How can I do this in Office 365? or with one of the many thousands of Office 365 apps, we can help guide you on that process. And so that's a unique part of our environment that's heads above other, other organizations within the system today. The other facet of our environment is we're enterprise focused. What that mean, it means is we look for solid, highly well-engineered solutions. We don't duct tape and bail and wire things together. Uh, we don't go get our computers from surplus. We, we, we engineer things and test them thoroughly before they're put together or put out there for you to use. Back to the tech buy store, for example, we test all the products that we sell through tech buy to make sure they work with each other before we put it in the store is there's no use selling some peripheral that doesn't work with the computers that we sell uh, because of some BIOS issue, for example. The other aspect of enterprise approach is we try to do everything the same way everywhere across the state. So it's more efficient and effective. So it doesn't matter where you are or, or what your job is, we're gonna provide the same level of support to you as as someone else elsewhere in the state regardless of your job description or title we're trying to provide the same quality services to everybody and that's what's called an enterprise approach and the last big aspect is we do a lot of partnerships with third parties be that vendors or tamu or at the tamu system level or other tamu system members um, so rather than you having to negotiate or, or struggle with another a vendor or a contractor or someone at TAMU or someone else in the TAMU system, if it's IT related, we want you to come through us because we already have very high level, strong relationships with those entities. And so it can help make whatever you're trying to do uh, within the AM system or even externally, perhaps uh, a much more efficient, easier process. Because uh, we're just not focused on our environment, we're focused on, on other people's environments and, and how you, our employees, are interacting with those. Uh, just to give you a couple of metrics about our current environment, um, especially for those of you are, who are on today or, or from the college. Um, today, we, we manage around 10,000 workstations in 290 locations across the state. Of all the computer systems owned within the college and the AgriLife agencies, that's 60% of them. So as we migrate in the college into our environment, those remaining 40% will be managed uh, as well. We currently have roughly 3,200 users in our active directory. That's 72% of all of the AgriLife and college employees today. So we just need to move approximately 30% of the users in the college that are in the college into our environment, and that will make it 100%. We currently manage close to 2,900 email accounts. That's 60% of, of everyone in the college and within the agencies today. 
Uh, we currently have 450 active Microsoft Teams with just around, I think it's actually over 3,000 team users today. Uh, that increased by 100 just, last, just in the last month. Uh, we also support, you know, currently 576 Laserfish users, 995 Texas Data Account System users. We have 784 AgriLife WordPress account users. So uh, currently, AgriLife IT is, is uh, I believe, the third largest IT uh, team and environment within the A&M system uh, behind Texas A&M and engineering and T's in terms of, of scope and, and scale. So just wanted to give you all a perspective that um, what we're dealing with in terms of numbers and what we're already currently doing for AgriLife in the college. So it kind of made sense to bring in the, the remaining percentages into the unified IT environment to, to have everybody together. So you may be saying, well, what, else, what does this mean to me? So again, one IT, this is where that one directory comes in. And then we go to that one AgriLife that Dr. Stover is talking about, one state. You know, the themes here are with our environment being 100% cloud-based, you're going to be able to conduct business any place, any time. Most of our users uh, on the agency side don't even know what VPN is. They don't use it. Uh, they don't have to because you can access your files, your email, uh, do interactive text chatting collaboration on any device anywhere in the world at any time. Um, and so it's less cumbersome than maybe how you have to do business if you're using TAMU IT services today and your files are on a file server and you're at home and you need to get to it. You got to have VPN installed and you got to start it and you got to slowly access the file and nobody can co-edit it with you collaboratively while you're doing that. So just a whole open greenfield of opportunity from the accessibility of in our environment. Uh, enhanced and unified IT support. Uh, again, our team is already very focused and in, that's uh, what I'm looking for, experts at supporting people remotely, that we have a, a team that is both regionally deployed around the state, but we also have a team here that's very central and does a lot of their work just over the phone or through Microsoft Teams or our remote uh, management software. And during COVID, they were able to highlight that as many of you went home to work and that team just really never missed a beat uh, because of the way that they're already engineered to work. In fact, our support team was already all virtual. So when COVID struck, uh, they just stayed home on day one and, and didn't come back until uh, recently, and that's because their computer was their phone, their computer was their interface into everything, and so they were able to just take their laptops home and and you could still call them and, and wherever they were at, their, their phone rang on their computer. Um, our whole team is engineered to pick up and move anywhere at a moment's notice and still be able to do the same work anywhere in the world. Uh, again, those self-service IT services are there for you and the ability to install software without having admin access. It keeps your system secure, but gets you the software that you need when you need it. We manage all of our workstations centrally with some really nifty management software that keeps patching and your hard disk cleaned up and keeps them compliant with the regulations that the a and system in the state of Texas requires that we do. Um, and so um, a lot of that happens behind the scenes. So as we move your computers into our environment, for those of you on the college, you're going to start to see your computers over time run a little bit more efficiently because our management software is doing lots of things in the background to make sure your system is finely tuned and performing as, at its best level. Uh, we also, with that technology, have the ability to alert you to situations with your computer that, that not, may not be in the right or good status. For example, you will receive automatic notifications if your computer is running low on 
hard drive space, for example, ahead of time, not when it runs out, but before. And it will give you the ability to fix it or to contact support with a ticket and get somebody to help you with that. That's just one of many examples that this software does. Uh, the other, again, is the one directory. I can't stress this enough. It's kind of like a hidden glue work in, in our architecture. The directory connects everything uh, in terms of being able to communicate with fellow college and AgriLife employees. But I just don't want to also let you forget that it also works with people externally. A lot of people are sometimes confused about how the environment works and whether they can include people from other institutions and whatnot. And I'll just say that, yes, you can, and it works quite well. Uh, we've used it for a number of years, and there's a lot of people out there innovating with, with lots of work groups and people around, around the world through our environment. Um, everything is centrally managed in terms of email and distribution list. Uh, for example, our environment automatically creates a lot of distribution lists. Uh, as we move in a college department, for example, the common distribution list for that department with all the employees in it, the master distribution list, if you will, is automatically created. Nobody has to do that. Um, and so there's a lot of automation that we built into the system to, to keep things like distribution list and and all the metadata around you, your phone numbers, who your supervisor is, all that's plugged into the directory so that our whole organizational structure is known in the environment, which creates a lot of really cool technical capabilities like able to use uh, Office 365 applications that do workflows and say you wanna route a document through a, a supervisor to sign before something's approved, the architecture already knows the organizational structure, so it's able to do things like that without extra programming or a complicated database being created. And that kind of moves into the last section where, unlike where TAMU is today and some of the other institutions in the system, since we've been using the Office 365 environment, which is a large part of our environment for, for many years now, we're into more of the advanced components of, of that uh, cloud environment. And so we have a lot of users that are starting to use Power BI, Power Automate to do a lot of AI and real-time data analysis, for example. Uh, another cool app is Forms. Uh, some of you may use Qualtrics. Qualtrics is a very complicated piece of software. It can do a lot of things, but if you're wanting to do simple surveys or quizzes and want to create like a 10 question quiz in less than a minute and a half, you can do that with forms and you can send out that quiz or survey to anybody in the world or within your organization just within a matter of minutes. It's, it's really neat technology. So how do we get there? Um, and this is really targeted to you on the call there from the college. So since that strategy was approved by the leadership last year and communicated, um, we've been doing a lot of planning in IT, about five or six months of hardcore planning and, and preparation uh, to put together a complete and overall plan for migrating the users out of the college into our environment. Uh, a lot of analysis on the current environments with 15 departments out there. Uh, there, <laughs> In some cases, there were 15 different ways of doing something going on and 15 different ways data was being stored. So we've been doing a lot of analysis of everybody's environments, make sure what we're dealing with and preparing for that as best we could. The next was testing. We, we have a pretty innovative testing plan that we put together uh, to move people's data and their workstations into our environment. Uh, that is a continuous improvement process. In fact, while we're speaking right now, uh, some of our team managers are planning testing in departments in a new department for next week. Uh, we look at each department in the college as a unique entity because they are. <laughs> um, and so we do testing focused by 
individual department and we take everything we learn and throw it back into the knowledge base so that as we go along, we're learning things in advance before we get to your department to be able to handle anything we find unique as best we can. And the last and ma most major component is a communications plan. Um, we, we sat down for several months and architected out a series of communications that would go to either department heads or end users at specific times throughout the timeline to keep you informed and, and where things were. Uh, as a part of that, we also put together uh, uh, new users guides and training materials, uh, not only just for our new college employees moving in, but our current customers along with a, a brand new innovative website that I'll touch on here shortly. And then the last is pulling the trigger, if you will, and doing the implementation. So as I mentioned, we're reviewing each department uniquely. We're looking at how many employees, where is the data stored? Uh, what's, what are the unique situations? Um, our, our implementation is, is going from uh, anywhere from one to five days for each department, and that's based on the scale of the department. So like this, this last week we did ag education and we spent three days with the migration, but next week we start animal science, which, and they're much larger and it's going to take five days. Uh, so we're fine tuning the, the schedule based on the department. Uh, uh, we're anticipating anywhere from one to 1.5 hours of downtime as we migrate each person individually. That, that varies depending on how many workstations you have or any other unique aspects of your computer environment. Uh, we've had some go over that. Um, and so it will just vary uh, depending on, again, you know, size of your, your data repositories, how many systems we have to migrate and things of that nature. How many emails are in your email account has an impact on how long it takes to migrate your email, for example. And then we anticipate having this whole process, which we kicked off last week, completed by the end of the summer with probability of kind of moving into the first or second week of September. Um, but that's, that's our target. Uh, we also know that there's a lot of people on nine month appointments, and so we won't be able to get with them until September as well. So there's very likelihood we'll have users still migrating one by one, you know, probably into October uh, based on their availability. So the next thing I wanted to show you real quick is our website and how to do a support request. So let me switch over to my browser real quick. So this is our new website. We, uh, the name of our support team is called First Call. So the, the name of the website is firstcallhelp.tamu.edu. And you'll see banners up here, of things that we're highlighting um, at any given moment in time. And this one just we posted yesterday for our new users from the college to get them to our new user resources that we've created. Uh, but on this front page, we've got our service catalog broken into categories and you can click into each of them and get a feel for uh, the different components that we have where you can get information on any of the services we provide. Over on the right hand side, we've got service alerts or things that we're highlighting, like our new our summer series of training events. Uh, then we've also got, uh, and these alerts are tied into the news. So you can see everything that we've ever posted and see the archives by the month here. So if you're ever thinking you're behind on our alerts, uh, this is where you can get any communication or alerts that we've sent out. By the way, we've already self-enrolled all the AgriLife employees in the email engine that's behind this. That's when we post something here, you're going to get it in your email as well. Uh, you're welcome to unsubscribe from that, but I highly don't recommend you do that because you're, you may miss out on some critical security alerts. We also have a security blog uh, where our security team posts 
uh, relative down to earth uh, security topical uh, FYIs, if you will, for you. Um, we try to keep them focused on you, the customer, and not highly complicated security engineering type issues. And then down here in the footer, and then also here at the top, we've got quick links. So if you need to set your password or get to the directory or jump into Office 365 Web or SSO or any of these other major applications or websites, you can do so. And here is where you can submit a first call ticket. Uh, you can fill out this form if you want, or you can click here and you can email us. You can submit a ticket through that form I just showed you. You can call us or you can live chat with us through our website. This, you would put your name in and as soon as you start the chat, it actually alerts our support team through Microsoft Teams. And one of our support reps will pick up your chat session and start to chat with you or pick up the phone and talk to you. Currently, if you're in the college, you know that these are the contact points for support. You might ask, well, why is that different than up here? Well, the reason is currently, those of you who are in the college, you're still using the services you've been using for the last four or five years. We've not migrated you, unless you're in Ag Ed, we've not migrated you off of the services you, you have from TAMU or from your department yet. So we have a dedicated team that knows what's going on inside the college department still to support you. But our other support team doesn't know anything about that environment and we don't really want them to because it's going away. And so what's going to happen after we get through with the migration of the college, these contact points will go away and they'll, they'll go back to our, our generic contact points, which are up here. So we kind of had to split our support team uh, to, to keep things focused until the migration is complete. And then down here, if you are on the call from one of our county offices, we, we, we created five or let's see, four zones where you can get, uh, where there's a dedicated team to support you in your area of the state, whether you're in a central or a county uh, as it's color coded here. The reason we did that, again, if you think back, I mentioned workload distribution. We wanted to distribute the workload across all the IT staff, no matter where they were in the state. So with these teams, they become highly efficient. In fact, the zone teams, as we call them, that, that manage the counties and research centers are one of our most efficient support teams. They, they generally leave the day every workday with only two or three unanswered, unanswered tickets in their, their queue, which is beyond belief if, if you ever work for a support organization. So this is our website. I, I encourage you to, to, uh, to shop around in it and, and see what information we have there. We've got new user training uh, that I mentioned uh, advertised here. Y'all are participating in this first one today. And we've got the remainder of them here. And if I'll switch back to my... Uh, my uh, PowerPoint real quick. Here are those training events. Uh, the next one is coming up on the 15th. That's Tuesday. You'll get to listen to me again, <laughs> but this will probably be one of the best ones in my opinion of the series where we're going to talk about uh, all the really neat things you can do with file collaboration in the cloud through Teams and OneDrive and through the applications like Word and Excel and PowerPoint as well. And just a whole host of uh, just come ready to take a lot of notes and we're all recorded as well. But you're going to see about five years of my brain dump on some really innovative ways to collaborate through Office 365 products. Then on the 17th, uh, we're going to have our our team and Bailey present a lot of the self-service stuff that you can do through the IT self-service portal and directory. 
I encourage you to come to that because that's a really powerful uh, set of information you need to know. And on the 22nd of June, we're gonna do our first Microsoft Teams uh, training event. It's gonna focus on communication techniques within Teams. And then on the 24th, we'll follow up with a more of a focus on collaboration techniques within Teams. Uh, then on the 29th of June, we're going to focus on mobile devices in Office 365. I mean, if you're a mobile user, you're going to want to not miss this one. Uh, I'm a highly mobile user. I'm one of these guys, one of these new two screen phones, and I can literally have two applications up at the same time. Uh, but it's not because it's a two screen phone. I'm really more efficient because of the Office 365 products and how you can use them on your mobile phone. So I encourage you to not miss that one either. And then we're going to finish off the last week of June and with July 1st in the middle of that week, I think. And we're going to highlight the Tech Buy store and give you a tour of the website and our facility and team here and how they do things. Uh, so if you're up for a new computer or need some new peripherals here soon, you might want to join in and, and listen in on that conversation. So with that, we have come just in time, 15 minutes remaining on our, on our hour here to take any questions you might have. Um, Bailey, I'm not sure if you have to unmute people or what, uh, but if you, if you have a question, you can, you can type it in the box and I'll try to answer it. Um, it looks like Bailey has been answering your questions while I've been talking. So, can you unmute Lori Smith um, Bailey? Hi, Alan. This is Lori. Thanks for Hi. your training today. This is great information. Um, question, whenever we need IT assistance, are we still supposed to just email first call or do you want us to email that IT service one at ag.tamu? I'm sorry, Lori, where are you located at again? The Amarillo Zone one, but are we yeah, supposed you, to just which you would way continue? Do you sure, good question. So if you're in a regional center or county office, I encourage you to look at that zone map and figure out which zone contact point you should use. Uh, the reason is there's a dedicated team for your center in the surrounding area, and if you call our central desk, who may be handling anybody from the college or anybody else around the state, it's probably going to be a little slower response time. But if you call your dedicated zone team that's been allocated to you, it's it's more than likely going to be a lot faster and they're going to be more specific, more targeted toward assisting you because they know your environment there. I just have another comment, Alan. We are getting ready for two new um, agents that are starting on Monday. Just a second. Sorry. And um, I was looking around at the IT website and there is a lot of great information out there. The new user checklist and things. It's amazing. Y'all have made a lot of changes and it's going to be a lot of help to us. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, appreciate that feedback. And and that's a good point, too, is we have a lot of feedback points on our website. So if you're at a page and you're reading it and you're like, this didn't really help me. Go down at the bottom of the page and tell us that we, we want to know the good, bad and the ugly. <laughs> so if if you feel like if we're doing a bad job on the website or, or, if you know, something we can help add to it, please feel free to do that. Bailey is our like I mentioned earlier, she's our new uh, communications and training coordinator. She came from our support team, so she understands you, our customers very well, but she's also very good at marketing communications. So that website's all her and uh, any of the emails you see going out are all her. Um, and we want to continually improve our communications. And, I, and a lot of you have probably noticed we've ramped that up in the last six months and have greatly improved. And I want to commend Bailey for really being the person that helped make that happen. So uh, it looks like, Lori, you asked a question about how we're sharing the information about these trainings. So, uh, yeah, so 
this recording will be put on the training page on our website uh, sometime later today, hopefully, if Bailey gets it done. Um, so each time we finish one of these training events, she's going to post the recording. So instead of a link to join, you'll see a link to re see the recording. And then, Laura, you're also referring to another new piece of technology we're using where you saw a very cool pop up on your computer screen this morning. Uh, our management software allows us to send you alerts and pop ups, and we're also using them as a communications uh, method to, to let our users know that, hey, we're doing a training event in an hour, click here to join. And that's what you saw this morning. We'll also send alerts to users via that, that method to say, hey, this weekend is uh, maintenance periods on Friday night and Saturday night. Leave your computers on so we can update them so you don't have to deal with it on Monday morning and sit there and watch your computer update for 30 minutes. Uh, let us do it over the weekend for you. Leave your computer on. You may see a pop-up that says that, for example. Do we have any other questions? Um, yes. Jeffrey asked how the graduate students are going to be impacted by this, and Ms. Sissy wants to know what kind of phone you have. Okay. So with the graduate students, uh, it, it may vary. It depends on how things are being done for you today, because it was different in every department. So. The first thing we ask you is, did, did your department that you're working for issue a computer to you? If they issued a computer to you and you see our communication going out to set up an appointment for your migration, please set up an appointment because we need to migrate you or we need to migrate that computer that you're using. Um, also, with regard to email, uh, some departments put their graduate students in exchange others didn't and they're using gmail if you're currently using gmail we're going to leave you as well as student workers on gmail because that's what the university provides to the students whether you're graduate or undergraduate but again we recognize some of the departments chose to put their student workers and graduate students on exchange and if that's the case for you We'll, we'll need to migrate your email as well. So it just depends on your particular situation. And then on what kind of phone do I have? I, I, I got this uh, uh, Microsoft Duo phone. It's made by Microsoft, but it's an actual uh, Android 10 phone. Uh, it's two screen, you can fold it and you can make the apps full screen. If you join in on the uh, the mobile device training later this month, you'll see this phone screen on being shared to you via Teams and you'll get to kind of see how it works there too as well. Thank you, Kelly, for that comment. We appreciate it. Uh, is there any other questions anyone might have? It's, it's a free for all. So if, if you got anything, don't, feel, don't be afraid to ask. Alan, we haven't converted to the um, Microsoft phone system yet, but we will be doing that in Amarillo. Do you have any comments on what has worked best versus um, headsets or the phones? What are you using today? That's a very good question. Um, what we've noticed is most departments or centers that we migrated so far to that, it, the major, I'd say a little over half on average are typically going with, with Bluetooth devices. So whether it's something like, you know, an earbud device like this or what I use personally, I can show you, is this is a USB speakerphone made by Yawlink, and it's actually Teams enabled. Um, and so that's what I'm speaking through you or to you now. And then... For those of you not familiar with our service with the phone system, we also have these new Teams, Microsoft Teams phones that you can also buy through our Tech Buy store. And they can be oriented different ways. This one's from Lenovo and this one's from Yawlink and it's a traditional phone. 
but I can't probably can't get my phone close enough that you can see your calendar on there like you can on your computer. You can see uh, the directory, uh, pictures of your contacts and things like that. So it, it all boils down to, you know, how the department head or center director is directing y'all as employees. Uh, but for the most part, it seems like everybody's getting what they personally want to get. My whole department uses Bluetooth. These are on my desk just for testing purposes. I never even pick them up. I, I do all my phone calls on my computer. But um, the, the way we offer the services, you, the end user, or by direction of your supervisor or whatever, you get to pick whatever device you want. Um, we're not telling you one way or the other, and everybody has their preference, but um, I don't know if that answered your question. Thank you. And Jeffrey asked that they're using Microsoft Teams with our grad students. Will this still work after migration? Yes. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're using Microsoft Teams with Texas A&M right now, or if you move to our Microsoft Teams, whoever you're currently working with, you'll be able to continue to work with. Uh, our recommendation is, is if you are using Microsoft Teams with TAMU, that at some point in the future, you look at migrating into our environment, because we're going to be able to support you at a much higher level uh, if it's in our environment, because otherwise we're just having to pick up the phone and call TAMU for you if something gets broken and wait for them to fix it. Whereas if you're just dealing with me and my team, we're going to be on it immediately. Um, last night, one of myself and our, our Office 365 engineer got a call from one of the CFOs that was on vacation somewhere at eight o'clock and she was having a problem and we're on it. Now, I'm not saying I'm answering every call at eight o'clock, but, <laughs> but you know, it was, it was, a, it was a, a red alert situation and we needed to take care of it. And if TAMU would have been involved in that situation, we'd all still be waiting for someone to help us probably still at this point the next morning, just, just on average. Uh, looks like Bailey answered your question, Brandy. Thank you for the comment, Kelly, on Jim Bradford. And Jeffrey's asking another question. Is there any issue for Exchange email, MS Teams, et cetera, on personal laptops, iPhones, and iPads? No, that's a very good question, Jeffrey. Actually, with the Office 365 licenses that we get, you're able to install Office 365 products on your personal devices at home. I think it's up to 10 devices. Uh, so you could literally install Office 365 on your personal computer, your, your mobile device, or what have you, and it's, it's all good from a licensing perspective. iPhones, iPads are supported as well. And uh, let's see, Chris is asking, clarify one more time on who we email for services. Okay, so... Here, here, here's the easy way to know for now who, who to contact. And again, we apologize because we're, we're going to bring all this back together again once the college migration is done. Um, if you're in a county office or a regional center, that's physically where you are, you need to call one of the zone teams, as we call them, that, that are on that colored Texas map. That, that I showed on a contact IT from our website. So if, if you're not in College Station, you need to call a zone team. It's that simple. If you're in College Station, you're, you're either in the college, which we're in the process of migrating, or you're a customer we've been serving for years. Uh, so for example, if you're in admin services or if you're at, a, at the Extension South Campus location or one of our institutes under research agency or HR or MARCOM or anybody on the fifth floor of our headquarters building, you would contact our first call team. Um, if you're with a college in a college department and you have not been migrated yet, then you would use the Coles IT 
email address and phone number because that's going to get you to those people that still know about your current environments quicker. If you if you happen to call our primary first call team, they're going to redirect you to the college team if you're not migrated. So we've, we've got it worked out internally to get you to the right place, but just so you don't have to do that that one hop, if you will, um, that that would be the rules of, of how to know who, who to contact. And it's all on that page that, that I showed and it's on the top menu bar. So if you reference that, you'll, you'll get it right every time. Uh, Patricia asks, I'm new to Coles. How do I know if my Microsoft Teams with you or Tamu? Uh, good question. You can actually open Microsoft Teams opening mine now so I get this right. And you can look up in the corner, upper right corner, and you will see your initials or your picture. And next to it, it will say either Texas A&M AgriLife or Texas A&M University. That's how you know which one you're on. And then Celine is asking, not sure if this is discussed, but are you still okay to use Tamu Google Shared Drive? Okay, good question. So a lot of people in the college uh, either went both ways <laughs> or went one way or another in terms of what they used for file storage. Uh, and a lot of people went with Google because it wasn't until just a few months ago, Tamu even offered Office 365 to everyone. So a lot of people are using Google and they also are user teaching with students. And so they have not only files in Google, but they may be using some of the Google apps to do some of their teaching. We're not telling anybody in the college to stop doing that. If, if you're files are in Google and that's how you interact with students, then continue to do that if that's if that's what you want to do. However, if if the department has a lot of business files and things that have confidential information, we really want to promote moving that into OneDrive and Teams on our environment so we can more A, support you better and B, uh, secure it better uh, and C, make it a lot more collaborative and easy to use. Google, you know, four or five years ago was really, really cool and had lots of innovation, but Microsoft has blown them out of the water uh, in terms of collaboration capabilities. And, and just so you know, every one of the other universities in the a &M system is either in the process of moving their students to Microsoft Exchange or they started that way from the beginning. Uh, and I, I have it on good ear from good sources that Tamu is likely going to announce this soon as well. Not, not, not like a mandate, but that they prefer you start heading the Microsoft way. There's a couple of reasons why. One of which is Google is reno renegotiating with all the universities how much data they're allowing them to store. And the rumor is they're going to they're going to only give Tamu University 100 terabytes free. 100 terabytes for the whole university here at College Station is nothing. Um, and so the university is going to be having to look at buying storage from Google versus having it free like they do now with this new contract that that renegotiating that's occurring. So I suspect there's going to be some pressure on Tamu. Uh, and the new interim CIO there to look at, hey, wait a minute, we're paying for all these Microsoft 365 licenses, which gives users 100 terabytes of email, um, five terabytes of OneDrive storage, and multi terabytes of team storage built into the licensing. So it doesn't cost anything. Whereas and it's relatively cheap licensing. Whereas with Google, it's fixing to convert from free to 98% paid. So I suspect there'll be some communications or changes there. So again, we're, we're kind of encouraging people to, to try to move into Office 365 environment, A, because we'll be able to support you at a much higher level. 
if something goes wrong with your Google space, we can't fix it. I, I'm going to have to call TAMU IT, usually a student worker, nothing, nothing about student workers, but they typically don't have the access to fix things is the problem. And so it takes longer because you're coming through my team and then we're going over there talking to them and waiting and waiting sometimes. And we're, we're, we're eager to, to get your problem fixed, but we can't fix it. We're, we're the middleman. And so we encourage you highly to look at moving into OneDrive and Teams and A, because it's got a lot more capabilities. B, it's already paid for. C, we directly support it. Our team has been using it for six years now. That's four more than the, the next matured one in the entire EM system uh, at the scale that we are. So uh, you combine all that and we can just give you a much better experience. Uh, Sissy asked about a switchboard phone. Yeah, that's, that's a good question, Sissy. So uh, really cool technology advancement recently with um, with the Microsoft Teams phones. I'll, I'll take care by real quick. I can type. And I go to our tech buy site and I'm going to go to the phone section. We have what's called an expansion module that adds on to the mid range and the high end phones that basically gives you the same technology you have today, but it's really cooler because it's this colored LCD panel and it actually is kind of like in Teams. It shows a little picture icon for all the lines that you're monitoring or, or you have a switchboard functionality for. And you're able, it has colored lights like red, green, yellow, and blue that show different statuses, like if a person's on a call or in a meeting. Whereas today on your old phone system, all you can really tell for the lines you're monitoring is that someone's on a phone call. You can't tell that they're in a meeting or in a Teams meeting or a Teams chat. But with this expansion module, because it's so high tech and it's plugged into Teams, you're able to do that. So this expansion model is is pretty cool in terms of, you know, uh, what it offers. We have several people in the extension headquarters office next door using the Yalink expansion module. And you can daisy chain up to five of these off of your phone. I don't think you monitor it. Hopefully, hopefully you don't monitor those many numbers or lines, but that capability is built in as well as every other virtual PBX uh, solution. We have a lot of agencies and depart or agencies, uh, centers and departments that have moved to Microsoft Phone that never really had a call queue or a call attendant, and we're setting those up for them. Uh, so, like after hours, if somebody calls the main line at the center, it it can have a greeting that says, "Hey, we're currently closed." Uh, click here for an emergency or whatever. We can program all that into the phone system. And the good part is we don't charge you extra like your current phone provider for adding lines, moving lines, getting rid of lines, adding a feature, upgrading a feature. It's all built into the licensing or into the service. All you do is put a request into our support desk and we'll take care of it. We're actually programming into our self-service portal that I mentioned earlier. A lot of these things you can do with the phone service, like request a line or add a line or a feature, uh, we're going to put that into the self-service portal here and be hopefully before the end of this calendar year. So you won't even have to do a ticket. You can just go do it yourself and it'll be automatic. We're a little over 11. I'm, I'm still free if people want to keep asking questions or we can we can uh, finalize this if, if everybody's good. All right, well, hey, I appreciate everybody coming in today on, on your busy Friday morning and, and hope you all have a great weekend. Thank you for listening.